class, welcome back to another exciting day. Today we're gonna to be learning about some art history stuff. Now today, how we go over art history in my class, uh, just giving you just a simple breakdown into how we go through art and what we discuss about it so that you guys can gain some knowledge from art history. So today's piece that I'm making, I'm making this because uh, in my county we were out a few days for some snow, some inclement weather, and because of that we're trying to do some online creation for, uh, for my students so that they can stay up to date in what they're learning. So this is just a simple breakdown of how we cover our history and just kind of give you guys an overview so if there's any teachers any students out there use this in the classroom by all means uh, take it adapt it and change it up however you want to my thing with our history is I want my students to be engaged in understanding what they're looking at not something where they're learning just straight up during this year these people were fighting and there was a war this Pope commissioned this artist to come and paint a mural I'm, we're not getting into that we're getting into why we like art what do, we, what do we like about it that's the most implicit thing that I like to cover with my students because I want to get their two cents I want to get that engagement from them and figure out why they like art or why they don't like it if they don't like it it's perfectly fine by me I just want them to be articulate in what they're trying to tell me about it for art history in my class we have three things we break down which is the description the interpretation and the judgment all right, for the description, the students are telling me what they see in that image. All right, for description, if you guys are working on this uh, for your class or you're working on it for my class, your description point is you're isolating six things in an image and you're writing down on your paper to turn into me for the art history so six things that you see in an image look around that image if you see a certain color if you see a certain shape if you see uh something in a painting that seems interesting and you want to put that down go for it uh let's take a piece by mr uh, wesley kandinsky kandinsky painted some non-objective abstract artwork and in his paintings there's shapes there's colors there's lines all over the place so how is this diagonal line transversing from one side to the other uh there's some one diagonal line where it looks like some blue and yellow shapes are, dra are dragged across or some blue and orange shapes uh looks like circles to me put that stuff down those are that's one element of the six that you need to cover for the description all right number two the second thing we're moving into is interpretation for interpretation point blank you're writing why you think the artist created this now this is an opinion piece you cannot be wrong if you can't convince me of what you're trying to say if i have no idea what you're trying to say i'm sorry but you don't get the points for that one so what i want you to do is break down why do you think the artist created those elements and the reason why they did the piece that they did well, let's look at uh, one of the most famous works of art by one of my personal favorites which is mr leonardo da vinci looking at the last supper overall you have 13 people sitting at that place but why do you think Christ, remember, if we're talking about art, I do want to mention this because if we're talking about art, Christ is a historical figure. Jesus is a religious figure. Always refer to it in the historical context. That way we don't have to get into the... Uh the bad stuff of uh, religion at school and trying to figure out who don't want to step on anybody's toes. So keep it as historical. So Christ is wearing a red robe and a blue robe. Why do you think he's wearing that? Why do you think uh, the artist painted those colors on them? He could have chose purple, he could orange, or some weird plaid pattern. I don't know. I like plaid. I wear a lot of it. Check out my videos. So you're just telling me your two cents as to why you think they created that piece of artwork the way that they did. All right, finally is the judgment section for judgment. Whether you like it or don't like it, it's that simple. But if you write, I think it's pretty, then you miss what we're trying to go for. I want you to tell your judgment to, to I like it, I don't like it, here is why I like it. I, I don't like this uh, piece uh, by Michelangelo, the Pietà, because it reminds me of like really depressing stuff at church that I had to go to when I was like a youngster and uh, grandma beat me with, beat me in the middle aisle with her, with her purse because uh, I had a freak out moment, which uh, that actually is a true story, not from me, from one of my students when we were doing a scare unit and uh, they came back to me, Mr. G, my, I, scared, I got freaked out in church and then grandma beat me in the middle aisle. I'll tell you now, that was one of the funniest things I've heard from one of my students, and it's probably bad that I'm laughing at it, but I'm sorry, but it's it's just funny to hear a kid come in, and when I say kid, these are middle school students, uh, which were about six feet tall and like 200 pounds, so hearing him come in, he did sound like that. Oh, Miss D. So wrapping up that judgment section, the things that you guys are going into, you're telling me whether you like it, whether you don't like the piece, why you like that, why you don't care for it, and giving me those two cents. Don't forget to put your name on your paper, and I look forward to reading those comments. So 
so take care finish up those uh finish up you guys' notes as always i will see you guys next class if you guys have questions put them down in the comments below look forward to hearing from you